Hey, before we get started with this episode, uh, it's a really special one where we have somebody who's in charge of 50 people in their grades as a scholarship chair. Uh, if you need help with your letter of intent, uh, please do get in touch with me soon. Uh, really kind of running out of uh, time on, on both ends uh, to make sure that we can uh, put something together that's uh, really high quality. As we get to the holidays, uh, things are going to get a little bit tougher. So go to residencyhelp.com if you need uh, anything in terms of uh, additional help uh, with uh, recommendations, letter of intent, and then if you need one-on-one -on -one help with me, uh, you can see how to get that uh, at residencyhelp.com. Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. Remember the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Today I'm here with Austin Bulker, who's a, at the Drake University College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. He is a final year pharmacist and came to mid-year, and uh, we're getting some thoughts after mid-year. So welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. Yeah, and thank you very much for having me on, Tony. It's a pleasure to be here with you and experience this mid-year conference as a whole. So tell me a little bit about, first of all, uh, what made you come to mid-year? I know you want to be a uh, uh, resident, but you don't have to come to mid-year. Uh, what was it that made you decide to come? Yeah, you're, you know, you're absolutely right. I don't think you have to come to mid-year if you want to be a resident, but I wanted to take the advantage that, you know, there's going to be over 900 uh, residency programs that are all going to be here in these three days, um, and I wanted to come and just talk to the residents and get a feel for it and learn more about it. You know, everybody looks good online and on paper, so, <laughs> good, so coming here to get a true feel and not only talk to the current residents and the uh, former residents, but also the RPDs are there as well as just preceptors. So I think it was just a good opportunity in general to come and speak with these um, people and just get a vibe for how they uh, how they feel and how they like to do the program. Yeah, I've heard over and over again, the ASHP website, they literally look identical, like the, the sites, you know, the... That they've got this many uh, residency spots, and, and it's really hard to tell. And, and really, it's all about fit and match, especially as it comes to the interview process. So what I thought we would do is go through the three sessions, and you had a bit of a un unfortunate draw where 11 of the programs you wanted to see were in the first one. Uh, so tell me how you kind of strategized that and uh, if you went in right away with the mob or if you just kind of chilled out, were a little patient, and you know had a different strategy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, when you when you go uh, to the mid-year and you hear all the stories from your previous <laughs> residents and how there's going to be thousands of people kind of bull rushing into this large conference center. So I took my strategy originated with, you know, I went through the ASHP directory and uh, found the programs that I was wanting to. And then you can go and actually see the floor plan before you even walk in. So I marked out where all these programs are going to be. There was like eight or nine rows worth of uh, booths to talk to. So, you know, I figured... You know, I had 11 programs on this first session, so that was intimidating in general just because uh, it was a lot in that three-hour time slot, especially when I had never been there before. Um, so I just kind of like worked out. So I waited. You know, Everybody's waiting in line, and it's like a big door opens up, and just people uh -huh. pour through. So I gave it about 10 minutes for it to clear out, You know, kind of get my bearings on the situation, look around. And uh, I started by going to my farthest away one first. Okay. I figured, yeah. I felt like uh, it was a good idea because most people were going to be kind of conglomerating. Oh, yeah, in the front. you know, In the front, kind of clogging it up. So I kind of gave them some time. And then I went to the farthest one. Uh, I learned, you know, you want to be approachable. So, you know, you don't want to just always barge in on the conversation, but you want to look like you're interested. So if there is an opportunity for a one-on-one -on -one conversation, introduce yourself professionally. Um, as well, and then just kind of get a feel for it. And, and no matter who you talk to, at some point, somebody's going to have to get involved in the conversation because there's only so many residents and there's thousands of students. <laughs> so I think not only uh, is it appropriate for you to allow other people to ask questions, but it's also um, a, a great opportunity to hear what they have to say. You know, you're, you're competing with all these students, don't get me wrong, but, um, you know, we can only think of so many questions, and sometimes people have great questions that you can listen in on. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. Okay, so uh, did you stay the whole time for all three hours, or uh, did you get done early? About how long does it take to get through that many uh, sites? So I was there for about the whole three hours on that first day. Uh, I really wanted to take my time and get involved with these programs and really ask my questions. Now, granted, I had 11, and you know, you look through the three sessions, and not everybody had that same scenario. Um, so I was there for the, for the full three hours, but there was one pr uh, program in particular that I really spent a lot of time there, and I caught up with some of the um, preceptors there as well as the current residents that I had seen uh, while I was on their rotation site. Okay. So, yeah, this first time I was there the whole three hours, but it wasn't like that the whole time. Okay. And tell me a little bit about, I think uh, that was the Iowa reception that night, is that right? Was, yes. Okay, yes, so correct. tell me a little bit about... Uh, the Iowa reception, how you kind of connected with people, because you 
think you and your roommate was your roommate here or yeah there was a group of four of us that were okay. all here together yeah and, and so what i find at the smaller schools especially the ones that have the six-year program like you do is that you have six years like you've known these people for a very long time um tell me a little bit about the kind of synergy you got from the uh, iowa reception and who you talked to there yeah, you know, I think the Iowa reception is just a fantastic place to go and see. You know, I think a lot of the people that I spoke to were from Drake, but there was also plenty of people there from Iowa and other schools in, uh, in the Iowa region. Um, but it was just great to really catch up with everybody. I saw people that I had worked with previously. Okay. I saw current residents, you know, people that, you know, everybody gets a job and they move far away. And That's it's right. Kind yeah. of like kind of like a rekindling for all that. So I, had seen, I hadn't seen people in a couple of years, and it was great to talk to them, see where they're at in life on what they're moving forward with. Cool. All right. So now uh, you get to bed early. You do it all over again. I think it started at 8 a.m. Is that is that right? Yeah, 8 o'clock the next day. <laughs> so it was uh, no, no shortage there. <laughs> okay. So tell me about that uh, next one. So now you've, this, you've already gone through one. And so what was different about the number two than the first one? Because your very first experience, obviously, it's a little overwhelming. But uh, what was the second one like? What did you do maybe a little differently that you didn't do the first time? So the, the second one going in, I know I had less programs. I only had five. So time time wasn't even a problem for me. I, I had three hours to talk to five programs as well as catch up with other people and so on. So, you know, I went through that first day, and I knew what questions I wanted to ask, and I also picked up on some other questions from other students. I'm like, wow, you know, that's a great question. I should incorporate that. Um, so going into I was a lot more confident. I knew what the workflow was going to be like. You know, again, you know, you, you, you get there at 8 in the morning and people You're are such a pharmacist to be with workflow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just yeah, trying to make sure the workflow is efficient. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Got to incorporate all the lingo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's 8, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. And, again, all these people are just ready to pour in there to go to where they want to be. And I, I get it. You know, you want to talk to the programs. But I think there's also um, you need to at least relax somewhat when you're going in there. Uh, yeah, we don't we don't want a stage five clinger. I think that was from that uh, Wedding Crashers movie or whatever, where, <laughs> yeah, where, you, where you're like, oh my gosh, this is the Cleveland Clinic, or this is yeah. UNC, or this is Iowa Clinics, yeah. whatever it is. Everyone's going to have a favorite, and you can just tell. They're just like, oh, I'm here. I was like, okay, you're there. There's 200 other applicants. But, right. All right, all right. So then uh, now you've... You've kind of gotten through the second act, and now you've got the afternoon. Uh, what did you do to recover uh, between the two? Because you get one hour or two hours. I know the hours. lines were out the door uh, for any kind of food or anything like that, but uh, what did you do in between to kind of recover, to kind of get back into the thing? Yeah, so we actually uh, we were lucky enough to get a table at one of the restaurants nearby. So we, uh, we sat down. There was five, uh, four of us, actually. Okay. And we just, like, caught up, you know, we talked to each other, you know, what programs went well, which ones didn't, what did you like, what didn't you like. And uh, one of my best friends is actually going through PPS right now. Okay. Um, so it was fantastic to hear that experience of the side of it because I think that's kind of something that gets brushed under the rug. Um, so, we, yeah, we just relaxed, had a good meal, and then, you know, uh, re-looked at our programs and see who we were going to see in the afternoon. Okay. And then, uh, so you made it uh, through the third one. Uh, what was uh, different about the third one, or were you now a, a hardened veteran? And uh, you you knew what was going on. Yeah, you know, I, a hard and veteran would be a good way to put it. You know? <laughs> I, after the two sessions, I think you're, everybody's a quick learner on what to do, what not to do, how to navigate, and who to talk to. Um, so the, the very last session, I think I had four programs again. Um, so I, I knew I had plenty of time, and I walked around and talked to some programs that I you know didn't have in my list originally, okay. um, just to see what else is out there. You know, I don't want to limit myself too much, and it's also good to branch out. Um, so yeah, I walked in, I had, you know, that list of questions, uh, that was engraved in my brain. I got to talk to people as well as just, you know, I think everybody was kind of, uh, winding down. So the mood was also a little bit lighter than it was the first two sessions. Okay. Well, I want to switch gears a little bit and uh, talk about some of your, uh, experiences in undergrad, in a fraternity. I was in social fraternity first, then I transferred and ended up in a pharmacy fraternity in Phi Delta Chi. But uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your role as scholarship chair. I was treasurer of my pledge class, and I got to tell you, getting money from undergrads, at least it was early in the semester when there was some money to have. But, uh, you know, it, it always takes a lot. And then when I was in Phi Delta Chi, I helped out with, uh, you know, fundraising and things like that. Uh, but scholarship chair, uh, they talk about wanting teaching experience, mentoring experience, but you are even above and beyond that where you're actually taking responsibility for the academic health of your fraternity. Uh, tell me how, first of all, you got into it, uh, why you became scholarship chair, and then 
how would someone succeed at helping 50 uh, young men, uh, you know, <laughs> keep their grades up? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Tony. I really appreciate that question. So I kind of went the alternative route, uh, the, or I should say the opposite route of you. I did uh, fight Alta Kai first. With okay. My, uh, so I joined that freshman year, and then, you know, uh, sophomore year I came in, and I knew that I wanted to be a part of a fraternity. So I joined Data Kai, and, you know, as any pharmacy student, really, our grades are going to be our number one priority for the most part throughout school. So I took on um, this great opportunity. I actually had a, a better uh, or even greater mentor who uh, kind of showed me the ropes of scholarship okay. share. So he introduced me to it, and I'm like, wow, you know, this is great. I think this is a large amount of responsibility, but I was ready for the challenge. So I took on the scholarship chair, and like you said, you know, I was in charge of managing 50, uh, 50 of my friends' uh, grades to make sure that we were, everybody was meeting um, adequate GPAs and all that to stay afloat. Um, and, you know, like that, you said, it's, it's, a, it's quite challenging. you got 50 guys with 50 different personalities. So we have 50 different ways that people, <laughs> that people learn and 50 different ways that people like to receive feedback. So I kind of started the, um, the scenario by going through the grades, you know, who was doing well, who wasn't, and kind of went with that. Um, so I reached out to these individuals and uh, just asked to meet with them. You know, I just kind of said, hey, you know, what's going on? I see that your grades aren't uh, where we would like them to be. Um, with that. So then uh, as I'm going along in this process, uh, a younger brother in the fraternity actually comes up to me and expresses interest. And he was a sophomore um, at the time. I didn't actually take on the scholarship um, chair until I was a junior. So okay. he was a year younger than me. Um, and he wanted to be involved and he really cared about the grades too. Um, so I told him that we should do this kind of as a co-chair. And as a co-chair, I mean more, he was my like mentee and I was the mentor. So I kind of taught him the ropes of how do we approach these delicate situations where some people are really giving it their all and they're just not doing that well in their classes. And, you know, as a pharmacy major, I can't relate to every class that everybody's taking. Sure. So I had to reach out, um, you know, other people in the fraternity that were good at these classes or had, had them previously, as well as reach out to campus resources. You know, I think... Sometimes the uh, tutoring gets overlooked as well as there's even um, faculty members in the university that are dedicated to helping students become successful. Um, so I kind of put these students in contact with that. So overall, I mean, it was a fantastic experience to kind of coach this younger brother along the situation, show him how I approach things, show him how we manage these um, grades for 50 different brothers in our fraternity and move forward in that aspect. So it sounds like, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of going from the rubrics from uh, all of the residency rubrics. You know, does this guy have teamwork? Uh, is this guy able to work longitudinally? And you worked over two years with a large group. Uh, is this person able to work interprofessionally with other people? And you went to the campus resources. So I think that uh, a lot of times when people are making residency applications, they say, well, that's not pharmacy related. But what we're really, what the residencies I think are really looking for is, is this going to be a team player? Is he going to work hard? Does he have a record of doing things and completing things over the long term. So let's talk about that because it sounds like uh, you talked about uh, the sites that you wanted. Uh, everyone has a PGY2 that you're interested in. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you're thinking about in terms of uh, the type of site. And I think you mentioned that it should have a PGY2 uh, ID, I think is what you were thinking about. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely correct. So infectious disease is my ultimate passion of pharmacy. So kind of what I looked for was these large academic programs or that are or teaching facilities that offer a PGY2. So it was kind of, you know, I, I enjoyed the larger atmosphere. The hospital I worked at during uh, school was about 600 beds, and I okay. felt that I wanted to go a little bit bigger or, you know, somewhere near that aspect. So all the programs that I chose to, um, that I, I feel like I'm going to apply to are these large academic facilities with these great learning opportunities as well as an opportunity to uh, proceed further in infectious disease. So I, I just really enjoy that large atmosphere, and I know all these large academic um, institutions are going to hold me at a higher standard and push me to become a better clinical pharmacist in the future. Um, so I really wanted that to push me outside of my comfort zone because that's where you really, uh, where I at least find true growth in myself, is okay. out of my comfort zone. Well, I've asked you a lot of questions. Is there anything you'd want to say that maybe I didn't ask you about? Uh, maybe some advice to a, a P3 that's just about to go in their APPEs uh, that maybe, you know, what should they be doing? What should they be focusing on? Uh, because it's kind of hard to be scholarship chair unless your grades are good. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you know, do 
you know, be a, be a good role model and stuff. But what, what advice would you have maybe for a P3 coming along uh, that's uh, going to be uh, coming into uh, the residency year? Yeah, so I think if a P3 knows right now that they want to do a residency or at least interested in one, they should kind of line up their inpatient acute care rotations uh, early on. Okay. You know, so mid-year lands in the middle of block six. So if you have the opportunity, blocks one through five uh, would be perfect, and even block six would be great too, to do these inpatient um, rotations. That's really going to benefit you moving forward. Because A, you can kind of feel, you know, if you're doing a rotation at a program that you're interested in, you just had a five-week interview. Absolutely. Which yeah. is huge. You know, yeah. you're, you're five weeks ahead of everybody else applying for this program. So I think, you know, and that's, that's pretty hard for a P3 to look forward to, you know, already trying to figure out what programs they want. Sure. But if you can get a good idea, it's not a bad, uh, not a bad option to pursue at all. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, just moving forward, kind of looking at what, um, what programs are interested, what areas are they interested in. You know, when you're doing these rotations, choose opportunities that you might not have in the future or you think are rather rare. So I really enjoyed infectious disease, so I asked for an ID um, rotation. And I think all uh, P3 should, you know, pursue their areas of interest as well. Awesome. Well, thanks for being on the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. Yeah, I really appreciate your time, Tony. Thank you. Hey, thanks for listening to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. And if you're interested in learning more about the interview process, go over to Amazon.com where you can check out 100 Strong Residency Interview Questions, Answers, and Rationales in print book, ebook, and audiobook.